I think the first thing you do when you when you take a character from the small screen and put them on the big screen is you have to, I think, first of all, you know, take them out of their comfort zone, take them out of their own world into a new world. And I think you also have to sort of get into their characters in a, in a more profound way and maybe, you know, give them emotional lives. S sending him to the city definitely opened up a new world and a new kind of, um, a new sort of vein of comedy to be mined, set pieces, fun to be had. You know, we, we knew that we'd have the, the, a little bit, we'd have the resources to do that. So we could, we could sort of uh, have some fun, we could get a city built and put those characters into the middle of that world and, and uh, see what fireworks ensued. So the idea was to get, to get Sean goes into the city looking for the farmer and that gave us an opportunity to kind of, you know, um, create some other characters and have some other characters come, come along from the city. And, uh, you know, one of those characters I'm particularly fond of is um, a little kind of orphan doggy called Slip, uh, who's in that great sort of tradition, if you like, in sort of silent movies of a little orphan girl at, um, and um, sort of befriend Sean. And um, she's very sweet and knows her way around the city. You know, she's kind of streetwise. And then um, we, they needed someone that was kind of uh, maybe not pleased to see them. And we had this idea of a character who was kind of like uh, sort of a bit of a bully um, in uniform, you know, kind of small minded kind of guy. And he was Trumper, the guy who's, who's an animal containment officer. And his job is to, is to kind of rid the city of strays, to gather them all up and, and contain them all in his, his kind of uh, animal containment unit, which he rules with a rod of iron. Uh, one of the interesting things about working stop frame animation is you are you are filming. You know, it's not like CGI where you're basically looking over the shoulder of somebody on a computer. You know, you're you're actually down. There are sets. You know, there is cameras rolling. There are kind of um, physical things and and physical scenery and so on. It just is all a lot smaller. Um, and and your actors are really the animators. And it's it's uh, by talking to them and respecting their sort of talent that you can bring the characters to life. And then sometimes we'll actually physically act out the shots, uh, you know, in a thing called the live action video, which is like a lav, um, which was like a, a, a room where you'd sort of draw a curtain and make a fool of yourself in front of the camera. And that would help the animators to kind of realize the shot. But sometimes they would just, you'd, you know, a shot would come back and it would just have some little moment in it which they'd created and, and had sort of taken the shot to a new level. I think the wonderful thing about Sean the Sheep is that he's a kind of, you know, universally popular character and not just in terms of sort of countries, but also in terms of generations, you know, grandparents and, 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 and their grandchildren like him equally. And I, I, I mean, you know, everybody who's got their own theory about what, why that is, I mean, he's funny, he looks cute. Uh, I think there's, for me, I think there's one thing about the, the universe, which is that Sean kind of, you know, they live on the farm and, and Sean and the flock have this life which the farmer, the humans don't know about. And I think children really um, find that a very appealing idea. It's kind of like a metaphor for a child having your own secret world and the adults not knowing what's really going on and you're getting one better on them. And I think that really appeals. You know, I always said it was a bit like two kind of quite volatile compounds that you put together and it all froths up a little bit in the beaker, but what you get is, is quite an interesting mix. If you love Shaun the Sheep, you'll love this film and you'll love it. You're going you're to get a great big 80 minute, you know, triple decker sandwich of Shaun. And um, I think also uh, we, we've taken the idea of Shaun the Sheep and we've, and we've kind of built on it and we've taken them to a new world and lots of great things happen. Um, there's some great comic set pieces in it. But I think above all, um, we tell a story that you want to sit and watch for 80 minutes and there isn't a word of dialogue in it.